Good morning. It's um, Friday the 15th of March and today I was planning to tidy up the front garden but the weather has other ideas. It absolutely lashed down all night. The ground is sodden and uh, we've got heavy showers forecast for today. So instead I've just Right, there's some lovely wild garlic. This pathway is a badger track. Down here, um, down here we have a badger set. Obviously, well lived in uh, because of the track to and from it. Anyway, we'll not disturb them. Uh, we'll just carry on with our mission of picking. And I'll put the camera down because it's going to be to be wet in a minute. From this position, I can see um, the, the rain coming up the valley. That's the River Wye down there. Got uh, nettles as well. Right, I'm back home with my foraged foods. Uh, there's the nettles in there. garlic. So I'm going to wash this lot. The garlic I'll just chop up and add a little olive oil and then I've got tiny little tubs um, so I freeze individual portions of that. Um, the nettles I'm going to wash and then just um, I'll get a metal tray and I'll leave them to dry um, here in the conservatory. The sun's come out at last so they may get a chance to dry. Um, if anybody fancies doing a bit of foraging for themselves, I can recommend two good books. This one is excellent. It's got uh, pictures, really good pictures for identification, descriptions, um, and it tells you what plants are similar, what, uh, well, plants that are similar and might not be edible or even very dangerously um, poisonous. But that, that's a really good guide. Um, this one, I've, I've only just read this. I bought it, oh, some time ago, just because I like their um, YouTube channel. And I, I hadn't actually read it. Um, I mean, I, I know about um, wild plants anyway. I've identified them since I was a child so I've probably been foraging even before these guys were born but I picked it up last night and I just had a quick look and I absolutely love the way it's laid out it's it's got excellent um, information more information on um, history mythology and folklore of the plants as well as uh, its uses um, 
culinary and medicinal and it's it's a really good buy I'd recommend this one so go out and do your own foraging it's all out there for free Just giving the nettles a bit of a helping hand by um, putting them on a very low setting in the oven and turning them every so often. Because I've got the um, camera on record. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Nice to see you. Bye bye. <laughs> I'm not going to edit that out. Your fault. <laughs> you. You'll have to excuse Alistair putting the V's up. It's not a rude gesture, I promise you. The, um, the V sign was brought about uh, back in the days when there were archers and uh, if they got away from the enemy, well, if, no, if they were captured, they used to get their fingers chopped off. Um, and if they got away, they'd turn and stick their Vs up just to show that um, they still had their fingers so they could still use their, their bows. So it's not the rude gesture that a lot of people think it is. I thought I just had to explain that. <laughs> I've still got um, four pots left from last year. I think I did about 20 pots last year. Um, so I'm going to start finish using those up. I'm just going to uh, pick some more uh, sprouting broccoli um, for dinner to have with um, garlic pesto.
consider this evening is um, stir-fried uh, broccoli and cavalier nero spears with uh, grilled halloumi wraps and salad. Oh, I forgot to mention, there's wild garlic pesto in there too. Good morning. It's Monday the 18th of March and um, it's a nice day outside but the, uh, the ground's still a bit wet so I'm going to hang on to go and do the tidying up that I plan to do. What I have got though is more seedlings to prick out. Um, I'll just show you what's going on here. I'll flip the camera around. Right, I've got more celeriac germinated and what's that one? Cauliflower. Right, these are the seedlings I pricked out the other day. We've got rhubarb chard, um, Brunswick cabbage and over there we've got the celeriac, spring onions and perpetual spinach. The um, nettles drying for making tea. Um, no broad bean action yet. But what we have got is Marge 2. Um, nothing on the P front. And all well, the lettuces are looking good. I think I'll put the I'll put the beetroot and um, yeah, I'll put the beetroot in the greenhouse, I think now, because that's quite hardy. Having said it's quite nice, it's now raining. I'm not going to get any weeding done today, am I? Oh well. <laughs> I've got going on in here now is radish and uh, the beetroot's in here. I've given away one of my perpetual cabbages to a friend um, and that's all we've got in the greenhouse at the moment. I don't uh, plant many flowers. All my garden is mostly taken over with vegetables, but there is a few splashes of colour. These daffodils have been in this park for years. They're an absolute delight. This is normally really lovely at this time of year. Um, the rain is spoiling the flowers a little though, which is a shame, but uh, hopefully we'll get some... Oh. <laughs> Our neighbours are having new windows put in, so excuse the noise. These are the beds. I'll have to wait till they finish putting their windows in. Right, this bed needs tidying. And so does this one. Just pricking out the celeriac. It's such a fiddly little job. They're so tiny. <laughs> I much prefer to grow celeriac than celery. And the flavour is so much better, I think. And celery is just watery. This is, this is quite a nice job, actually. I find this very relaxing. Pricking out these tiny little baby seedlings. Trying not to damage the stem as I put them in. I don't know whether you can hear me above the noise of the um, um, next door's drilling. They're having new windows put in. But I think they're at the front of the house, so I'm here at the back. And uh, I can still hear it, but I don't think it's, it's that bad. I had an email this morning which was interesting. Um, it's from 
a company that want me to review something. I'm not going to say what it is yet because I haven't actually received it. It's the first time I've been asked to do something like this. So I'd really be interested if uh, I could have your thoughts on um, what happens when a company decides that uh, they want you to review something. Uh, I've used the product that they want me to review. I have actually used a similar product in the past, quite a few years ago. So um, it'll be interesting and uh, please do write in the comments um, if you've had experience of doing this and uh, what benefits there are, are there any downfalls, be interesting. And uh, so watch this space and I'll let you know if they've, uh, what they've sent me when I get it. That's the first lot of celeriac I pricked out last week and <laughs> that is the little baby ones I pricked out today. They can stay in the conservatory for a bit. I've just been rooting around in the, uh, my seed box and I'd forgotten I got some salad burnet at um, a seed swap last month so I'm going to put that in and um, I found some swede, so that's going to go in too. There's those two trays ready for the windowsill upstairs. Swede and salad bonnet. I've never eaten salad bonnet before. It's a perennial apparently, as long as you don't let it go to seed. Um, so I'll give it a go, see what it's like. I've just noticed, got the first um, tomato through. That's my home saved. That's my home saved Alicante seed, and one of the Harbing Harbinger Harbinger is through as well. Nothing in that one. That's the Fantasio. Oh. It's now. Uh, evening, Monday evening, and uh, it's all quiet now so I can talk. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'll just end this video here. Um, like I said earlier, I've been sent this product to review and uh, I've not had any experience of doing this at all, so I just uh, wondered if anybody could give me any advice on um, <laughs> the pros and cons and what to do and what not to do in the description links uh, in the description that would be fantastic thank you very much if you could and um, I'll see you uh, in the next video next week I expect bye for now